The fifth tip uh, that we'll talk about is using something called the SPIOS component. So the SPIOS component uh, is essentially a way of creating a black box model of a set of geometry and sources that can be used to easily and confidentially transfer data between SPIOS users. So one SPIOS user could black box a set of geometry and sources, pass that to another user who would be able to simulate the output of all that without having access to the actual CAD data that was used to create this output. It's also a way of transferring data across different CAD platforms. So for example, you can export a SPIOS component from CATIA and import that same SPIOS component into NX without losing any accuracy uh, in the geometry or in the source distribution. Essentially, this component uh, contains the mesh data of the geometry and the sources. So in SPIOS, when we run a simulation, we go through all the geometry and sources and mesh everything in our format so that it's simulated outside of the actual CAD geometry. So this component contains that mesh data, but not the actual CAD geometry, but still allows you to run simulations as if the data was in your actual project that you're using. Uh, the caveat is that the SPIOS version must be the same. So if you are exporting a component from a 2017 version, on the other side, uh, the person importing the component must also be using the 2017 version. Whether it's NX or CATIA, as long as the SPIOS version is the same, uh, this will be compatible. So this is a great way to share data uh, from a supplier to a customer or vice versa, supplier to an OEM, I'm sorry, uh, because you can have the emission characteristics without uh, having the CAD geometry, which is typically confidential. So currently, uh, it's available in the CATIA, NX, and CREO platform, and in the next release of the SOLIDWORKS platform, it will also be available. And then a last note, uh, it can also be used to pre-mesh very complex geometry to avoid having to run the initialization every time a simulation is run on that particular geometry. So essentially, you're importing the mesh of maybe a lens or a reflector uh, something that requires a long initialization time so that every time you run a simulation, it doesn't have to do this initialization process. So just to quickly show uh, how this might work using the same example. In this case, I have two light sources, uh, my light guide, as well as um, two pieces of geometry at the button output. So again, I'm going to use the CATIA uh, platform as an example, but this would be the same process in any platform. The SPIOS component buttons are these uh, up and down arrows that you see in the top right. So the up arrow is an export component feature, and the down arrow is an import component feature. If I click on the export command, uh, it opens a window like this where you have to define which sources and which geometry you want to include in this export. So what's nice is that I can just pull that from the simulation that I use. So in the sources section, if I click on the simulation that I ran, it will pull in the two sources that were used in that simulation. And in the geometry section, if I click on that same simulation, it will pull the geometry that was used in that simulation. The last step, which is optional but definitely recommended, is to specify the access system that's being used so that when the component is then imported, it keeps the same orientation and, and same uh, origin point. So for this case, I have a point created at the output. And I'll use just two lines to define the x and the y direction. So once I have all of that selected, it creates this export feature in my CATIA tree. And I can use just a run command to generate that SPIOS component that was exported. In this case, I'll import it back into the same model. But in reality, you would probably share this data with somebody else who would be importing it into their system. But for this purpose, uh, I'll use the import component command. Uh, 
All that's required is an access system. So this is why it's important to specify that, uh, that export access system. So I'll use the exact same uh, points. So the, the origin point here, and then the same two lines for the X and the Y direction. And then I have to choose the exported component, which I want to import. So I have it here in my output files. I have my continuous component export, which is just an SV5 file that contains all of that mesh data. So I'll import that file, hit OK. And then all I have to do is run that import in the same way as before. And it creates, it essentially imports that mesh data uh, from whatever was exported. So if I hide the actual geometry and, and everything else, you still have all of the same components. So you still have your source, your light guide, the button, and uh, the triangle, but it's all just mesh data. There's no CAD geometry present in here, but I could still run my simulation in exactly the same way. So for the sources, I choose whatever is located in that, uh, in that import feature. For the geometry, I choose whatever is located in that import feature. And then I put whatever sensor I want to use for this particular uh, simulation. And that will create uh, essentially the exact same simulation that we just saw before because what we're simulating is exactly the same as running in all the actual geometry. So there's no difference in, um, in results because we're using the exact same data, but this hides uh, the native CAD data from whoever is receiving the file. And right now, all of this mesh data is locked, so no modifications can be made to it. But what we're working on improving is being able to, for example, adjust the materials that were applied to this in case you want to, in case whoever's receiving the data wants to experiment with different material types. 